Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildenhall and Volma and today I have a very special video for you today um, which involves this box um, we're also going to have a history lesson and we're also going to have a um, future projects um, on this video as well so it's a little bit and also a bit of present as well because I'll give you a current progress report on the layout itself and before we can get to the main event, which is this box, um, we have to do a bit of a history lesson. And that history lesson is related to my box. So without further ado, I'm going to spin you around and we'll start with the history lesson. So in front of you is um, my, basically my TV it's hooked up to my laptop and you're currently looking at a screenshot or, or an image I should say of a Warren Lane layout and Warren Lane layout container terminal had a big influence on me growing up um, this layout is sadly retired now and has moved on um, but it was an absolute wonderful layout and it had a huge bearing on my railway modelling, um, which is something I always wanted to do. I couldn't quite do it at Beringer, Ringwood South. I couldn't do it either because I just didn't have the space. And here I just and I was going to start doing it at Beringer, and then I I ended up having to move. So you know it kind of got shelved. Um, but the image I really wanted to show you about this particular um, layout was. This freight liner lorry, and I saw this, and it always stuck with me. And I really, really wanted one, but I had no idea where you got them from. I didn't know it was such a grand job, I didn't know it was a repaint at all, or anything like that, or it's custom made. Um, to me, I just thought it was just maybe an Oxford die cast or something like that and or maybe from somewhere else and I didn't realize at all that it was um, custom made until a few years ago and a few years ago I had the pleasure of meeting um, Michael Lawrence and Dan I believe his son Dan Lawrence um, at one of the shows and um, this is like I said this is going back I think a couple of years now um, such lovely people and Michael is currently building his own GWR layout which I am very interested in and also his son I believe is also believing or has also got a layout or working on a layout that was supposed to be um, exhibited this year I think it was obviously because of circumstances um, that got that got shelved obviously um, so here is that freight liner lorry once again in another shot um, here in front of you. And, and me and Michael have kept in touch over the years and he told me how much he'd helped and made things for Warren Lane and, and all the rest of it. And I said in passing that I really loved the Freightliner lorry, and I was wondering where, and I asked him, you know, where, where could you get it from? And he explained to me that he created it. And basically out of that, for this, um, he kindly said to me that he created one, uh, he created that particular Arctic on the layout and he said he didn't have the original one but he could do do one for me and as, as we all know he kindly did this for me and it's absolutely a superb superb model and um, if I just put a man in it and it got repainted it's even got the Welsh flag in it inside it's got so much detail on it um, it's got the pipes on the back of it it's got the, um, the registration plate and the lighting um, and it takes pride of place on my layout. 
and he sent it with this scratch built trailer and it's absolutely wonderful and again it's got all the detail on the back of it and that also came with a weathered container so that's its pride of place on my layout so now moving forward a little while ago um, we were doing some discussions amongst the railway community about um, the class 66 and the lighting for the class 66s and out of that came an image and I'm going to spin you back round in a minute and show you the image in question. So bear with me a minute and I'll spin you around and show you the image in question. So this was the image in question that came out of our discussion about the class 66 lighting. Um, and I was looking at this one network livery one because that was the one I just happened to be doing uh, pure coincidence and if I take you slightly to the right you're going to see what I'm talking about and as I pan you to the right you can see that there is an image of a truck and that truck was in the one livery so that got me thinking and got my cogs turning in my mind I wonder if there's any clearer images of this of this lorry so I got to the old googly and this is what it come up with now I'm going to see if I can zoom it in a bit it might sort of get a bit distorted but you get the rough idea of what we're looking at and this is what I came up with um, make note of the um, ship in the background because that will be coming up in a little while um, so for the meantime this is the image I came up with and what I did is I split this image into two and I was like I really 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 wanted one of these images I really wanted one of these trucks is what I should say and what happened was um, I started going to Google again to see if I could find one of these trucks. So this is what I come up with. Um, so I had a look and it looks very nice. It looks relatively convincing. Um, a couple of issues, um, pros and cons. Um, this was off truckmo.com. Um, I don't know if they still do it or not. Um, I, th I think it was done via eBay or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, a couple of pros and cons. It looks absolutely wonderful. However, it, it's the new Scania, which is a pro. Um, but it doesn't have any kind of detailing in terms of um, stickers and transfers and things like that to say it's one vehicle. So it's just literally... And the big drawback is that this is 187 scale. So that means it's HO scale. Now, from my previous um, experiments with HO vehicles, I found that they are a lot, lot smaller compared to a double O version. So, automatically, I scrubbed this out. I thought, oh, this is great, but unfortunately, it's just not right. Um, I looked at Oxford Diecast, and Oxford Diecast don't actually make the new Scania, this Scania, yet. Whether they will or not, I don't know. Um, but unfortunately, they haven't done it yet. So that brings us up to today. Um, because there was only one man that I thought could possibly help me with my dilemma. So I contacted my uh michael and explained uh, my dilemma and whether or not he could possibly 
help me with my dilemma. And he just kindly, just off the bat, just said, you know, I can do that for you. It's not a problem. Leave it with me and I'll sort something out. And I was like, yes, hooray. Um, I know I'm just so thankful that he could do it and he said he really enjoyed doing it and I'm just so grateful that basically he's done it for me and essentially in this box um, has the lorry or two um, I did sort of say um, I, I wasn't sure which one it was and so I'm not exactly entirely sure what's in the box um, so but, um, however it comes, I'm just totally grateful um, for his time and effort for being able to do this for me. And uh, so I guess we best crack on with the opening. So you've now had your bit of a history lesson and how we've ended up at this box. Um, it's, I, I wasn't aware that the one livery they did they did they did i knew they did shipping containers and they i knew they painted up um i knew they painted up a um 66 but in terms of um whether or not they did trucks or shipping or anything like that um So he's just sent me a little, a little message, which um, I won't read to you, but it's um, like, however it comes, I'm dead pleased that you can do it for me. So um, it is like Christmas, and so appropriately, it's come in a Christmas box. <laughs> um, so. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I should say I've had a pretty rough week, so you know, hoping, you know, it just should. You know, I was just absolutely pleased, and um, and there's another bit of documentation here, but like I say, I won't go into it too much. But it is so well packed. <laughs> As you can see, um, let's just get you down a little bit and we'll put that to one side. Right, so there's one, two, it's very exciting this is. Just want to make sure that um, right. So let's have a look, see the suspense builds, and I'm a little bit being a bit careful with the trailers. Um, I know it's diligently taken a lot of time to build, build them. And I think this is one of the trailers here. And um, it's so, so wrapped up. Okay. <laughs> oh wow. This is just one of the trailers. It looks awesome. I mean, I know it's very much similar to the other one, but I mean, it is. That is 
That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving that. Right, so let's show you the. This is the first trailer. Um, by the looks of things, it's the two lorries, and I've got the containers. So that's cool. Um, so let's show you the actual first trailer unit. And it's pretty much identical to the green one, but a white version. But it's it's got some subtle differences. It says the one on the back, and it's got the, the, the lights on it. And it just looks absolutely awesome. I mean, this is really fun. I, I know I said this before, but it's just such fine, intricate stuff. It really is. It's just absolutely awesome. It really is. Gosh. Right, okay. And let's get on with the next bit. I'm a bit paranoid. A bit paranoid with the, with, with the trailers because, um, like I think I said this earlier, I know I did have an issue with one of them before, um, but I, I mean that's not a problem now because it's all glued. It was, it was just one of the legs that popped off, so I'm just quite careful about how I handle it because I don't really want to sort of inadvertently squeeze it or. We'll break it. So this trailer is pretty much identical um, to the other one. So this is exactly the same, I believe, as the other one. So that's so that's two of them. And then Um, let's see. What? It's very exciting, this is. <laughs> it's like being a kid in the candy store, isn't it, really? Unraveling. It's like parcel parcel this is. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Holy schmoly. There's a, there's a driver in there as well. Um, okay, yeah, let me just get on and show you instead of me babbling on. Um, I'm just taking in all the detail. So here is the first of the tractor units and it's absolutely awesome. And I have to say, um, I'm gonna, but anyway, let me just show you and then we'll, this is the tractor unit. And as you can see, the pipe work you can see the number plate, the lights. It's just exquisite stuff. Um, and then if you spin it around, it's got a driver in there. It's got the one logo. It's been painted up. It's got the one logos on the side. <laughs> oh my God, it looks awesome. It does, it looks, it looks superb. It's just not so lovely. Um, bear with me one minute because what I'm going to do, in fact, I'm just going to keep the camera rolling for a sec because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the container over. Oopsie, just inadvertently knocked that down. Okay, so um, if you kind of marry up the pinks. That is pretty much, to my eye, I mean, I'm just grateful in any case, but to my eye, that pink is pretty much spot on. 
you could probably say that this one is a bit more um, deeper but with the, this one here I think that it is it's just yeah that's just awesome oh my and there's also a bit of detail in here I'm not quite sure what that detail is but there's a little bit of detail on the front windscreen just in the corner there I don't know if you can pick it up um, but that just looks absolutely awesome right let me do it like that so you can see the detail like that that's just incredible that is just hectic <laughs> oh my god I haven't even opened the other one yet <laughs> and it's just that is just Blooming marvellous, as they say. Um, I'm one lucky girl, I have to say. That's just, yeah, this is definitely Christmas come early. <laughs> uh, gosh. I mean, just looking at that one, you know, I'm like, so ecstatic i mean even with just the freightliner one i mean they're just absolutely the detail it's just awesome let's have a look okay here we go this unravels to eventually reveal what it is. <laughs> oh, this version is just... Oh, God. That is just superb. Oh, my. Um, I, I, I'm just speechless, honestly. The amount of effort and work that's gone into this, I have to say, it is absolutely amazing. Okay, let me show you this one. Um, jeez. I, I, I'm, I'm just lost for words, really. Right, here's the second one, and um, again, it's got a driver in it, it's got interior cab detail, he's got a paper, uh, the back has also got all the lighting and the number plates and hose pipe, all the pipes, vacuum pipes I should say probably, um, and it's just absolutely stunning that is just that is awesome um on his note mike actually said i hope you like it it's to your satisfaction and it's as per my freightliner one it has way more exceeded my expectation it's just absolutely superlative and it just adds so much color to the layout and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on the layout and i'm going to um show you them up in right up close and personal so you can actually see them um because i think it's worth it i mean it just from here, it's still a bit of a distance. So we're going to put them on the layout and then we're going to have a closer look at them on the layout. That is just absolutely superb detail. Thank you so much, Michael. And I've got my pink lippy on as well. <laughs> so I'm going to spin you around and then next time you see it, I'll put this on the layout so you can have a good close look at it. So here are my three 
lorries, Arctic lorries that Michael kindly done for me. And each and every single one of them has a very special place on this layout. And they all look superb. And I guess that one photograph I showed you in the beginning of our history lesson is what set all of this off. And it's just absolutely superb. <laughs> I really do. I'm really, really happy. Um, let's just take a closer look at this. That's just epic. Gosh, just the amount of effort, you just look at these trailers and the amount of effort and time it's taken to do this, the vacuum pipes, everything, they look absolutely superb, honestly, I am so, so pleased, wow, <laughs> So moving on to the present and the um, current state of the layout, we have the one lorry, the new one, over here. And that one's waiting to be loaded up with a container. Um, my 66 here in the one livery. Um, and I know um, that I haven't taken you over to this corner, so I'm just going to go straight to that because I think the video is going on a bit, but it is a special video. So here are my two Freightliner um, lorries. Um, like I said, the one in the foreground is the one that um, Michael did. And the one in the background is the one that you can get from Oxford Diecast in the new colours. I don't know if they still do them, but I'm going to move this one out of the way briefly, just so you can have a look at this Stradler. Because this is something else that came from Michael. Again, it takes pride of place on the layout. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, I've watched a few videos on these. And it's just absolutely brilliant. It really is. Um, he also, incidentally, gave me this crane here. Which is still in operation. Um, and he's also done a DBSO for me in Network Crowd, which isn't on the layout. But it, it is around. Um, and then if we move to this side, this is where all the work's done. As you can see, here's the other one pulling in. Um, so what I've done is I've now designated this area for the, for the truckers. Um, we've got a parking area. We've got, so we've got a couple of vehicles there. And we're going to get some people. Um, so we can, so they can go up to the hot dog stand and um, get some food, get some lunch whilst they are either waiting to be loaded or offloaded or having a break, whatever. Um, so I've done that and I've painted it up, did all the mark road markings and all the rest of it. Um, over here, I've also added another set of barriers because this is going to be the scanning area. Um, so the Containers can be scanned as they come in. I haven't built the scanners yet. Um, that's something else I need to do. And there's also some additional road markings that need to be done along here. Um, so that's something else I'm going to do. Um, just for John Warner. Um, about the porter cabins. Yes, they were absolutely everywhere. And here is one of them here at the front end. There's another one protecting this end. This, this end. Um, there's also one dotted about on the layout, right on platform three and four, which is at this end. And I've also got another one for the inspectors. So this is where the main work has been done. And um, these lorries absolutely look superb, all of them. I mean, even the ones that I bought off out, out of the shop, they, I think they also do a grand job on them anyway. I think they look really superb. But the repaints have just been 
they're just stunning and it just adds another splash of color to the layout um, and I did actually look at some of the Freightliner ones and um, to see whether or not the um, let me just show you on the containers here um, this Freightliner orange um, Freightliner haven't gone so bold with their trucks in terms of painting them orange and having them with this kind of logo maybe they do um, later on or something but the ones that I've images I've seen on the internet they're pretty much um, a white tractor unit with the um, Freightliner logo um, just sort of stuck on the side of it and just here is my other little port cabin there So welcome back to my sofa and now I'm looking at some future upcoming projects, one of which I've started. Um, so again, we're looking at another box and this box is um, slightly different. Let's bring that towards me. Um, and I've made a start on this project. And as you can see in this box, there are a couple of HSTs. And basically, um, I'm now in the process of um, repainting because um, I'm not really using these. Um, this particular one here. Um, they're both actually really, really cool, Nick. They really are. They, really, they don't really need repainted. They're not scuffed or anything. Um, it's just I find I'm not using them. And basically, I've come up with a plan to repaint my HSTs. Um, because many of you know, I've now got a couple of super detailed ones. And one of the super detailed ones is the Sir Kenneth Grange one, which is in this livery here. I've also got the um, super detailed pack in this livery also. Um, so this is going to be repainted. Um, this one, I like this livery too, um, but I find I'm not using it. I'm not running it because it's not really the era in which I'm running. Um, so what I've decided to do is I'm not sure whether this one's actually going to get repainted it might not it might stay as is and I might keep one as an end um, because I've already started on a third I've got three I haven't got four um, and I've also got the failed HST unit as well um, that I've done and that might get repainted so the idea is um, I've been running quite a bit of GWR on my layout and I was having a little conversation with um, Gary last night about said HSTs and I've been wanting a first great western HST for a long long time and that is the blue version um, but you can't get them for love nor money. Um, you really can't. And um, I don't know if Holby will eventually reproduce them or not. I, I'm not really too certain, to be honest. Um, but in truth, the ones that Hornby did, the super detailed one that they did, I never actually was overly pleased with them in any case. I, I felt they weren't quite the right blue or they just look they just didn't look right or whether they looked a bit too plasticky I'm not sure so whenever they go up on eBay they always go up for a song and a dance they really do they go up for, they go up for sale for stupid money and so I've decided to have a go at making my own using the HSTs that I already own and albeit they're, they're Lima ones but they're still really really good quality and I've made a start and I've been taking some photographs as I've been going along. So I won't delve too deep into this, but I'll show you so far what I've got done um, with my HST. So this is one of the, um, one of the, was one of the intercity ones. Um, it's now currently in a primed state. 
and I'm going to be painting this, like I said, into the first great western blue colour. Um, I've ordered the transfers from um, Railtech um, and hopefully they'll be with me whenever. Um, hopefully it won't be too long. Um, but this um, is currently, like I said, just being primed up. Um, I've also, like I said, I've taken, the, uh, you can take the glazing out very easily on the Lima HST on the back portion, but the front, I think they're glued in. And I didn't really want to risk taking a scalpel to it or a screwdriver and then shatter it or put a dirty big crack in the, in the front windscreen. So I've decided to use a product called Mascol from Humbrol, which I've got, which is actually what's propping this. And then basically primed it and underneath I didn't use the mask all I used insulation tape because I wanted to make sure that none of the paint actually seeped inside um, so I've used insulation tape on the inside to make sure that that's all covered up so this particular HST um, is in the process of being repainted into the first Great Western colours and I'm not going to start on these ones in the box until I've done this one because obviously if I've bodged this one then I've still got the others that I can still make do with. Um, but this particular one um, is basically like a test bed really to see whether or not I do a good enough job on it and whether I'm happy with it. Um, I'm not using, for anyone who asks, I'm not using an airbrush. This is pure aerosol cans um, that I'm using because um, I don't own an airbrush. But, you know, I'm happy with what I'm doing so far and I'm pretty confident that hopefully it will just come out okay. And at the end of the day, it's like I'm not doing this professionally, I'm not doing it for anybody else, so I'm not doing a, re this isn't a customer kind of request or anything like that, this is just purely for my own personal use. So if I basically mess this up, then that's down to me and um, it's only me that's going to be upset about it and like nobody else. So it is kind of worth a risk because these two are just, these HSTs are sitting idle and I think I could get some really great use of it and swapping trains around by making my own. So that's that. And then finally, um, I've got another project on the go, which is the, um, it's called Operation Columba. And I'm gonna spin you around for a quick chat about that and then we're gonna call it quits because I'm sure this video is probably been going on way too long. So. Bear with me one second and I'm going to spin you back round to my screen and I'll show you and talk you through Operation Columba. See you in a minute. So for the final part of this um, video, we're going to quickly talk about Operation Columba. Um, this ship is a container ship, unladen. Um, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and my mission is to recreate the one Columba. Now, I did say I like to push myself with my modelling, and this is something that I'm going to endeavour to build. Um, I've never really done this before at all. Um, it's not really going to be able to go onto the layout because of the size of the layout. Um, but this is something just to push me and it's just something that I'm really interested in doing. Um, so this is the one Columba in its unladen state. Um, if I was to try and do this into 176 scale, uh, it, the, the size of it would be huge. It'd be actually bigger than the layout itself in terms of its length, I believe. And the actual width, I, I sort of had a look at it and it was going to be at least, if I wanted to sort of replicate what I was actually seeing and I had a look at some of these images and haven't taken a close look at them um, like Tony's been doing with his scratch build at the station where he's been kind of looking at the images and measuring up and everything I did have a quick look and the width is at of the, of the ship um, would have to be something like if I just between there and there would have to be about two feet wide and I just don't have that to put onto the layout. So it will be sort of like a cut down version. Um, 
with a but with a view of that if I possibly want to put it on the layout at some point that maybe that could happen um, but it's purely because I really want to build it um, I have this kind of idea in my head about maybe one day if I have a dream home and a dream layout then this would be included in it, it a, a bigger version of Volmer would be included into my new layout if I had the opportunity and um, if that was the case so but in any case um this is this is the ship and this is it laden um i've never done this before i have no idea whether it's going to be out of card or whether it's going to be out of plastic or, or what but i know that i'd like to try and have a gut building it and this is it unladen again um, this isn't the Columba, this is uh, another ship, one of its sister ships. Um, but again, you can sort of see it from the back. They're pretty much the same in their, in, in, in their appearance. Um, so I have a rough idea of what I'd like to do. And I know that I've got it in my head to do it. Um, when I'm going to start doing it, I don't know, or start it, or if, even if it is going to happen. It's just something that I'm really um, interested in doing and to push my modelling skills um, further. Um, I, I just I just love the idea of, of possibly doing this. And obviously having this kind of reference material here had, gives you just an idea of, of of how it how it looks. And like I said, I'm not going for the intricate detailing of it all. It's just going to be basically loosely based on one of these ships. And it's, you, you know, I'm just going to, it's almost going to be a flatbed. So don't, I don't want anyone to expect that it's going to be some sort of like, I'm going to put every sort of um, bar and post and rivet and, and, and all these kind of things onto it. It's going to be really is going to be a real basic form, but it's going to have some presence to it that you look at it and you're going to just know exactly what it is. So this concludes today's video. Um, my apologies if it was a long-winded video um, for some. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I think it's well worth it and well interesting. And to be honest, it's just what Michael's done for me. Um, it's just absolutely, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And um, not just today. I mean, everything, all those other bits and pieces really just, it really just sets off the container layout, the container layout and makes it look, the terminal look more and more um, befitting of a container terminal. And um, Warren Lane was definitely the inspiration, no doubt, and has always stuck with me. And I've just hopefully done some justice. I mean, obviously it's not on the grander scale as Warren Lane, but I mean, it was just a superb layout. And if you haven't come across Warren Lane layout and you are interested on it in it, just by all means, just Google it and look at it on YouTube. And there's plenty of videos of it on YouTube and that will give you plenty of ideas. Um, but I did spend many hours at exhibitions sort of in front of that layout, just looking at it. So Michael, thank you so much for what you have done. I'm just totally speechless. It's like I said, just like the Freightliner lorry, it just exceeded all expectations and I'm absolutely ecstatic. And I hope you found the rest of the video um, just as interesting uh, too, as well as the unboxing. And like I said, thank you so much, Michael, for what you've done. And um, yeah, um, wow. <laughs> thank you so much. And um, yeah, until the next time, I'm just going to stop babbling and um, thank you so much. And until the next time, it's goodbye from Milton Hall and Velma. Bye bye. Take care now. Bye.